Uh, wolves alter livestock behavior. We've noticed the, some of the spatial change in the behavior. It's just they, they change their uh, areas where they spend time. And we've also noticed uh, that they change the temperament of the animals. The animals have a tendency to be much more aggressive. The cattle have a tendency to be much more aggressive when they've been under heavy wolf uh, pressure. We also have a component of the study which is looking at uh, the economic analysis of, of wolves. That's being done by Dr. Neil Rimby over at the University of Idaho. But there's no doubt that it increases the workload on the ranch, uh, increases the workload on the rancher, um, and there, there are costs associated with it. Often the uh, cattle that are, that are hit by wolves uh, are still alive. And so there's a, there can be substantial t investment for, by the rancher in, in the veterinary cost trying to, to uh, keep, these animals, uh, keep these animals going. So, uh, you know, as you go from pr an uh, agricultural pr production system to agricultural production system, the way that you can protect these animals uh, changes. And on these extensive landscapes, it's very, very difficult to do much, you know. Uh, when we typically will see cattle disperse over large areas, so animals in the same herd may be five miles apart. And so to, to provide some sort of a protection to a, a dispersed herd of 350 cows over, you know, eight square miles is, is very difficult. Uh, so at any rate, um, there's no easy fixes on this. Um, I think that we have to have solid data in order to make rational decisions and so that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to get as much information together as possible. So at any rate, uh, if there's any questions I'd be happy to try to answer them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, your presentation, especially the movie showing the movement was really remarkable. And um, you said something that made me think um, about the, the damage to livestock herds where, where maybe there's no no injury, no 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 lethal, no fatality or anything, that there is an effect and maybe even a cost, uh, I hate to say yes. psych psychologically, but uh, how does that manifest? So what does that look like and how, how are costs incurred for okay. that kind of thing? Because we, because we track these animals at five minute intervals, we can look at the interaction or the travel distance of a cow before and after an encounter. In some animals, what you'll see is there'll be an encounter and then the activity of that animal is very, very high. Lots of movement, lots of movement through the day. And so they go from having this sort of a, a lazy kind of a demeanor to all of a sudden very, very active. In other cases, you'll see uh, uh, a proximity and no change in the behavior in terms of the spatial behavior. So I, I think the I think that there's probably uh, quite a few of the animals that end up getting, you know, getting worked up over that. But it may be that the cow doesn't actually know that the wolf was there. It, it may have, you know, passed by. Uh, I ask the, the ranch hands on this particular ranch how often they see wolves, and they tell me once, maybe twice a year. It's, it's not a common occurrence. It's, it's, it's very rare. You hear them. And you see signs, but you you typically don't see the wolf itself. Okay. Senator Olson, uh, Dr. Johnson, thank you. That was a very informative report, uh, Mr. Childers. Um, yes, sir. The department uh, tells you that you know the, the wolves are out there. Um, does this help? Is this is this good reporting system? Does it help you to detour the the cows from the wolves or the wolves from the cows? Well, the, the thing with it is that you get that right, we get the ODF and W gets the download, and they and then we receive it once every 24 hours. Now, so we we get the last download that uh, I think they're set on ever three. They can be set at different time frames, so three or six hour intervals or whatever. Well, we'll get right now. I'm getting four downloads a day, so it's once ever six. So. But when I, so I, I the cl the most updated one is say I, they comes at six o'clock in the morning. I get the text message around six thirty or so, thing. So I know where the wolf was, not not where he's at, and uh, 
So they, you know, trying to use non-lethals and to show and people say, well, you got to be out there. Well, so you, you don't know. Yeah, he can be 11 miles away from you, and I can go out there in an hour and here he's standing and things. But I'm not aware of that. The the text messages we we do use, utilize them. I mean, the guys will say, okay, they're here, so we'll go out and whether we. We scare the wolf off or not, um, the way the topography of our country and things, you know, you're running from 2,500 feet up to 5,000, a lot of canyons, a lot of timber. We don't see them, the VHF receivers that we utilize and th that, we, that we're given. Um, if it's line, not line of sight, you don't see it. And so we don't know whether, whether, we're, whether it's a benefit or not. We think it is, but, but we can't say for sure. That, Follow up, uh, please, Tom. Um, I made a note here that uh, on, you have a large cost for injured cattle. Mm -hmm. Is it beneficial to, if a cow's been mauled a little bit, is it beneficial to save that so it can calf again? Because you, you certainly can't sell it for beef then, can you? No, it, de it depends upon how extensive the injuries and things. Uh, there was a calf that was injured up uh, this summer up there, and uh, the ranchers took it home. The veterinarians actually looked at it and the, some of the bios and said, you probably ought to put it down. And the guy took it home, and he couldn't bring himself to do it. And he, he brought it back to health and things. Mm -hmm. So, But very tough, very time-consuming. And, yet, you know, and it's just uh, you, they didn't, you they watch didn't. these things be born. You don't want to watch them die and things like that. And well, so you, you, do, you do sell it so I can have roast beef, don't you? Bet. you? Yeah. yeah. So you don't watch that, that part of it. Are you trying that's to get like a product. discount on no, your roast beef not. or something? Just, just one other follow-up question. I'm yeah. kind of interested because we we're talking about wolves, but what's the, do you have any predation from uh, mountain lions? Mountain lions? And think that I, to my knowledge, I've been in Wallow County for over 35 years, and I have yet to lose a cow or a calf from a mountain lion. Uh, Mr. Childers, I would just, as a, as a producer, um, you know, we have the permit, which, you know, been 50, 70, something like that. Not one take has the wolves are. What's your thought of a permitless take? Uh, it doesn't seem to be that scary of a thing. Uh, would that help if, if uh, the depredation, if you came on it or saw it or could do something with it? Uh, I'd be interested in your reaction to that. Well, Senator, the, uh, I think the, the take bill that's, uh, that's in now, that in my knowledge, uh, the, the thing is is that it's no different, the uh, language is no different than in our Cottony Act permits. So um, it, to me, it's not going to be a, a benefit and things the, the, as it's written and things because of the, the language. Uh, you still got to catch them in the act to be able to use a permitless take. And um, you know, maybe save somebody from handing you a piece of paper, but it's not. It, it, there's no difference. That's my question, and maybe I'll ask Carter to come back up uh, at the end to answer this. Is 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 it? You know, is it is the fact that the the wolves in the you know a certain area they're preying on the cattle because there's not enough elk. Or is it because they're not in close proximity? Or I'm sure it looks like Rod's dying to I give me to his that. thoughts on that, and then I'll probably have Carter come up and yeah. <laughs> I can't hide my emotions on that one. Um, the Chess Nimbus um, area in Wallow County, the Amnaha Pack, uh, utilizes the Zumwalt country, mm -hmm. which is about 80,000-90,000 80, private property acres. There's 3,500 head of elk on that area where some of these uh, Amnaha depredations have been. At the same time, the elk are there, the, the cattle mm -hmm. just getting turned out. So I, um, there, we've got lots more elk than what we really want on private property. And uh, the commission, I will uh, recognize, has bumped the elk tags up there to try to help with that. But 3,500 down there. We haven't figured out how to get elk tags to the wolves yet, though, right? There you yeah. go. That's, okay. uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and one last question about, uh, and, and again, this may be for ODF and W, but I'd like to hear your perspective on it, the percentage of depredations that are occurring on private land versus public lands, because I, I know I'm assuming those black lines were the private Perfect. ranch lands, and it looks like, you know, obviously we're not fencing off. Uh, we have open range land, and I'm assuming it's much harder to do flagry and non-lethal when you're in open range. So uh, I'd certainly like to hear your perspective on that. Oh, Senator Dingfelder, uh, on that there is that uh, the Imnaha pack and things, um, 
like kind of like I'd, maybe a couple of probables and uh, maybe a couple of confirmed injuries, injuries plus one confirmed death. Uh, as far as on public land, so say five out of less out of around 30, 25 of those have been, 24, 25 have been all on private property and things that, in kind of those black lines. And that's the thing when you start looking at flagery or rag boxes and things. And the rag boxes, they're the noise makers when the wolf comes so close with a collar that they'll go off and uh, there's noise and then there's different lights and things so to try to scare them back away we try we employ those around cabin areas and things but what uh, what we've been told is uh, 40 to maybe an 80 acre pasture uh, for flattery and uh, and up to maybe a quarter half a mile on a on a rag box and otherwise you're starting to get out there quite a bit and economically flat flattery just you just can't do it and maintain it and things in our setting so would you like to add to that yeah. yes uh, thank you uh, chair Dean Felder I guess uh, uh, Senator Haas isn't here right now but I kind of wanted to elaborate on his questioning about the further economic uh, hardships that's put on with cattle and and just to go on with what uh, dr. Johnson said the in reality the depredations are probably the minimal of the economic damage that occurs to ranches. The other uh, economic factors there that play in so dramatically are weight loss. Conception rates are, are very dramatically dropped. The temperament of the cattle are, are changed so that they do not range their body score. Their, the, the brood cow's body score will come in at a much lower rate than what has been previous to wolf activity. So if you, and that's part of the economic factors that's being, that we have enlisted with our beef council dollars in Oregon Cattlemen's, that's part of the study that we really want to get a full picture to everyone that, so that they can under, you can understand the, you know, the whole big picture impact of, of wolf and cattle interactions and, and conflicts. So I just wanted to elaborate that on a little bit. Great. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. I really appreciate your Senator. coming here today. Did you have a, oh, I'm just, sorry. Just a couple Sen quick questions. Senator Bates was out and. Yeah, I had to take a call sorry. from practice. Um, I saw numbers here that the dep not, not depredation, but loss of weight and things you're just talking about were about $250 a head. Mm -hmm. I, I just read very quickly on that, and I think Dr. Johnson you brought those figures up. When I was raising cattle, we were lucky to get six, seven hundred dollars a head, and to me that would be. I mean, would, would, we wouldn't even raise the cattle at that rate. I mean, it wasn't be worth the money we put into them, the time we put into them, the grain we put into them, and, and put them on the field. So that was one question: is how much you get in the head? I mean, how much is this? How much is affecting your actual outcomes financially? And the second question was kind of a strange one, probably a stupid one. Um, anyone using dogs to try to keep the the, um, mm. the the wolves off the cattle? Is anyone doing it? Is it working, or just a waste of time? Give them one more thing to eat. I mean, <laughs> what's happening? Well, I can speak to the dog issue, and that is that uh, there have been uh, guard dogs killed by wolves in our study areas. So it's. When, when you have a pack of wolves, it's very difficult to have enough dogs to be able to uh, protect the livestock. Okay. And Do you want to answer the financial uh, piece of that? Yeah. On the financial end, that's that's the direct loss that uh, Mr. Will John Williams that wrote for the uh, financial side, the yeah, papers that you there. got there, yeah. And things are, right now, uh, a uh, 500 a wing calf in the fall is somewhere w worth around last fall they were worth right around 800 850 dollars and things so and your profit out of that you you know your your gross right now or um your cost and things your expenses on that is somewhere over six hundred dollars six to six up to seven hundred dollars a head um we're feeding 220 dollar hay right now so mm -hmm. it gets expensive and uh, so uh, you know we're lo we're but when you take that loss out out of that on that gain, there's there's no in there's no net income left and things with that. So, all right. Thank you very much, gentlemen.